Thank you for your assistance. I'm fine. Perhaps I was overzealous. I thought I could move all this clay in one trip. But it proved more burdensome than I thought. I appreciate your concern, but I'd best take care of this myself. Although, I had been considering getting someone to help out at the shop from time to time. Hmm, yes. Gathering clay. This is something workshop owners do, is it not? If you would be willing to deliver five clay to my shop twice a week, it would be a great service. And you will be compensated appropriately, of course. Well, this has been a pleasant interaction. Furthermore, it has been a pleasure to be properly introduced to you. I'm glad I fell. See you at my shop. Thank you. Your assistance is much appreciated.
Yeah. And so you see, uh, that mischievous little Mion made a teensy little mistake. When she said that we don't charge for overnight commissions, uh, what she meant to say is that actually, we do. In fact, that's an understatement. We charge out the wazoo for overnight commissions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know all about the overnight policies. It's just that Mian said she thought she could get us a discount. Yes, well, she's been overruled. Sorry, old pal, but if we made an exception for you, we'd have to start making exceptions for everyone. And that would be far too exceptional. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't want to shortchange the good folks over at the Commerce Guild. That's what I love about you, Owen. Always so perfectly punctual with your payments. Well, I must be going. My employees won't reprimand themselves, don't you know? <laughs> so long! Oh, hey! Uh, you've come at just the right time. So, the wildest thing happened. Uh, Grace had a little spat with the oven and, uh, <laughs> long story short, blew the whole kitchen to smithereens. Don't worry. Everyone's fine. And luckily, Mian was available to help out with damage control. So that's all well and good. My issue now is that the night the kitchen exploded, Grace insisted she'd take a pay cut until all the repairs were paid for, and she wouldn't take no for an answer. But now, now without me Anne's discount, I just can't let Grace foot the bill. She'd be scraping by for months, if not years. I paid Yen already. It's water under the bridge in my mind. Cause, you know, these things happen. I, I can't stand letting her take on such a huge burden. She's just a student. All right, so here's where you come in. As a builder, you can just convince her that the repairs aren't that expensive. <laughs> then she won't feel so bad, and maybe she'll just forget about the whole thing. It's f all right. Uh, but 
uh, let's not be too hasty now. We need to be prepared if we're really gonna change Grace's mind. She really has a way of turning things around on you. <laughs> uh, maybe she's on the debate team or something. Here's the deal. Whatever she asks you, just follow my lead. Capiche? Don't let her throw you off your game. Stick to the plan. Guess we're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's go track down Grace. I'll be right behind you. Put in a bit of salt. <gasps> ah, thanks, boss. Ah, <laughs> seems someone hasn't quite learned their lesson, but that's neither here nor there. Look who I've brought. Your friendly neighborhood builder, here to help us come to a, a conclusion on that whole explosion incident. Oh, hey! And you're still on about that, Owen? That was a terrible mess, and I'm completely to blame. I'll be footing the bill in full for the kitchen restoration, regardless of what you may have told the builder here. Uh, hey, uh, come on, Grace. It's it's no biggie. And, and even if it was, the Blue Moon has plenty set aside for rainy days. Or explosive days, for that matter. Anyway, everything is taken care of now and it hardly cost me a dime. Uh, don't believe me, just ask for a second opinion here. Hmm. All right, I'll bite. You plan to tell me the truth now, don't you? Let's begin. What is your name? Huh? Where are you going with this one? I have my reasons. Your name, please? Okay, next question. Next, where are you from originally? Hi, Wind. Nice weather this time of year, yes? Very windy, I've heard. That'll do. Now I know what you look like when you're deciding whether or not to answer truthfully. Next, I'll be asking what I really want to know. And don't even think about bending the truth to help Owen change my mind. Got it? I can read you like a book. Now, Builder, tell me, how much did it cost to renovate the Blue Moon Kitchen? <clears throat> you know, uh, more than a few glasses of milk, <laughs> but less than a herd of yakmal. <sighs> Grace, it's fine. I wish you'd just forget about all this. <laughs> yep, just like I said. Hmm, I see. Next. The events in question occurred two days prior, and on the second day, when I came to work, the kitchen was already as good as new. Something here doesn't add up. Don't tell me you builders are dabbling in magic. Explain. What's your angle, Grace? The two new builders in town are both riled up and full of vinegar. You're just used to old Mason and his whiny ways. Nothing unusual here, right? Don't sell yourself short. Hmm, I see. Next question. Regardless, Owen must have had to pay me on for working overnight. Tell me how much that would have been. Ah, uh, well, uh, be that as it may, <laughs> the kind lady that she is, Mian gave me a discount. Uh, the difference in the bill was so small, I almost forgot about it. Okay, next question. Grace, 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 Grace. Enough with the third degree. There's really nothing more to be said. Boss, you sure have a lot to say for someone who says there's nothing to say. Why do you always butt in whenever I ask a question, huh? It's starting to seem like you two are in cahoots. <laughs> cahoots? I, I mean, 
Uh, what even is a cahoot, really? I think this whole ordeal has you on edge. Uh, but, all right. Have it your way. I'll zip it. Continue with the interrogation, please. If something like this happened in the Commerce Guild, would your boss, Yen, handle it like Owen? Which is to say, would he insist on paying the damages out of his own pocket? Yeah, but the thing is, I think you do. You know, at first, I was kind of entertained by this little charade of yours. But, I mean, you could have at least put a little effort into your story. I'm afraid I can't oblige such a pithy performance. I'm sticking to my guns. The kitchen damage falls on me, and that's that. All right, all right. Looks like I won't be able to change your mind. I suppose I could take a hundred goals per month out of your salary, and then... Five hundred. Let's just get it over with. Ugh, come on. You'll be just barely scrapping by for months. That's nothing to me. Come on. I already agreed to let you pay. You gotta work with me a little. Stick with one hundred a month, alright? Alright, alright. Thank you, Owen. Well, thanks for coming. And at least helping us get this mess sorted out. Sorry to take up so much of your time. Uh, stop by again soon for a drink, won't you? Hey, Builder, I got a real important, official Silver Core commission for you. Uh, if you got the time for it. Well, if you're standing here talking to me, that means you must have time. <clears throat> Basically, all I need is an official Silver Core deputy cap for the upcoming promotion ceremony I'm organizing. Oh, and you should join the ceremony too. Being all that's transpired recently, it seemed only right to make you Builders honorary members of the Silver Core. Which means, you may very well be making your own deputy cap. That's right, the next deputy of Sandrock might even be you. Hey, don't look so surprised, partner. Even new members of the Corps can be considered for the position, and you really showed that Giggler boss guy who's... boss. Anyway, I just wanted to commission a deputy cap for the ceremony. Whoever gets promoted gets the cap. So, what do you say? All right, hats off to you, partner. Uh. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Here's a recipe for making it at your work table. Come drop it off when it's made. Good day, Builder. I'll have you know that I've decided to stay in this town until I finish writing the story on Logan. It's the hot story in the press right now, and my editor Eduardo's adamant that I see it to the end, no matter the cost. Since I don't see Logan being captured anytime soon, I've decided to move into the Old Town Lodge. The Blue Moon is cheap and quaint, but it's so noisy that I can't write for the life of me. And I keep having nightmares. Yes, nightmares about the editor my pa appointed to oversee my work. That man is a monster who would butcher my work until he saw fit. Indeed. Small columns pay the bills, but are hardly fulfilling as a creator. The novel is the true proving ground for one's skill. This Logan character? Adapting his story into a narrative of my own could be the next big step for my career. Hmm? Oh, well, yes, of course I have to do an adaptation. Not just write about his life. I'm writing a novel, not a biography. Plus, if I used his likeness without his permission, who knows what a crude felon like that could do? He might sue! Furthermore, I'll never meet the guy. Well, let's hope. I'll never get an interview, I'll certainly never get permission to write about him, and yeah, this way I can write whatever I think will be best for the novel. Much better. I'll just make a bandit character based on him and call him... Rocky! No, no, uh... 
Dr. Killface! Ah, that's terrible. Ah, right, of course. I did actually have a point to make with this tangent. That desk at my new apartment. That desk, the height is all wrong. The way I have to sit to write, it cuts off all the circulation to my brain. Now all my ideas are terrible! So, I need your finest writing desk with a pulpous comfy chair to get the juices flowing again. I'm counting on you! Great! Remember, I need the finest writing desk with a pulpous comfy chair. I'll hold off on the writing until I get the furniture set. The best stories need the best furniture! I got another builder and the local carpenter to help out with the rest of the furnishings. Ooh, can't wait for everything to be ready! S -s 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 Space Punch!
Aha! Aha! Ah! It's you! <laughs> Dang, you got me good that time. Say, how'd you like to get in on a little secret? Here's the scoop. I may or may not be in the possession of information that may or may not lead to the capture of something big, real big. Something simply known in the Yak Girl community as IT. But I'm afraid that's all I can say for now. I'll let you know how it goes. See ya! Thank you. <laughs> now that's what I call a deputy hat. You can really feel the authority flowing out of it. And you know what? I think with such fine handiwork, you might have just improved your chances of becoming our next deputy. The ceremony is tomorrow in Martel Square at 9 a.m. sharp. Don't be late. Thank you. I am absolutely amazed at your craftsmanship. This set is good enough to put my paw's furniture to shame. I don't know what to say. I guess now that the furniture has been taken care of, we can get the housewarming party started. Being new to Sandrock, it might be in my best interest to make some new friends. And of course, treat my existing friends to a good night of fun. How about it? You wanna come? Good, good. 
let me tell you what you need to bring. Let's see... Can you bring one dish? If one person brings one dish, ten people should bring enough for a feast. I'll take care of the other stuff. One more thing. Is there anyone else I should invite, in your opinion? But it's just a housewarming party. Getting the whole town might be overdoing it. By my next birthday, I should be more acquainted with everyone. I'll invite everyone to that party instead. And I'll even get my cook to fix up some nice dishes. Anyway, I'll write up the other invitations right now. No point in keeping you here. See you at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Remember, bring one dish! Welcome all! For some of the new folks among us, I shall be reviving the age-old tradition of regaling y'all with the origins of our fine celebration. <clears throat> the Day of Memories is a festival celebrated all across the free cities. Some folk have different ways of celebrating, but the fundamentals remain. We all are aiming not to forget about those who came before us, paving the way. But the Day of Memories is not just about sorrow, not only about loss. Though it did begin as the result of a rather tragic event. Indeed, we aim not to mourn the absence of those since past, but rather to honor their memory and look forward to the future. Like most things, we sand rockers like to do things a little differently around here. Back when Martel had just discovered the Oasis, it wasn't that long removed from the Age of Darkness, when people were still cowering underground. Martel thought to organize a game not unlike Hide and Seek to finally take advantage of the freedom offered by the vastness of the above. She had people hang lanterns all across the forest around the oasis to tell our ancestors, as well as people traveling the desert, that we're here and we're doing well. We'll continue that tradition today. Let our tears and joy resonate across the desert. Let our departed ones know, with one voice, our one message, and that's that we're still here. Come, let us bow our heads and take a moment of silence in remembrance of those not with us to celebrate today. Now, without further ado, let the day of memories festivities begin! Today's the day of memories! There's all sorts of fun stuff to do!
Thank you. I hope that you were able to obtain this without any peril. All right. Now that everyone is here, let the official Silver Corps Deputy Promotion Ceremony begin. Now, I don't need to remind y'all, we've had plenty of ups and downs, highs and lows, as well as no shortage of stormy weather out here in Sand Rock. And without all of you giving it your all, Sand Rock wouldn't be the safe and secure place it is here today. Nevertheless, there's still one who stands out among the rest. One whose tireless dedication to law and order has earned them the right to call themselves Deputy of the Sand Rock Civil Corps. Mm. Wow, I don't know why, but I'm really nervous all of a sudden. I don't think he's going to pick one of us, do you? I mean... Now, <laughs> I don't mean to tantalize you all. I'm sure you're on the tip of your toes wondering who I've chosen to be my deputy. So without further ado, <clears throat> our next deputy is known not for brute strength, but nimbleness and wisdom. Our deputy brings a uniqueness to the team and fills in the gaps in our core skill set with raw, individual talent. With flowing oh, black hair that this. shimmers in the really? sunlight it's as they fun. dish out hearty, heaping helpings of justice with elegance and finesse. Let's give it up for our next deputy, Captain Cat. Yeah. What the, the cat? Yes, I Captain, moments. or should I say Deputy Captain, has not only been diligent in patrol work, but this year's mice incidents have fallen to an all-time low. Yes, there really is no question that Captain is the most deserving of this title. One more time, a round of applause for our new deputy. I'm so embarrassed, but congrats. Congratulations, Captain. And now, to complete the ceremony, I will place the official deputy cap upon the head of our new deputy. Get on up here, Captain. Everyone, keep giving it your all out there. Dismissed.